Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tommy with Elevation Every Weekend here. In today's video, I'm gonna give an in-depth look and review of an entry-level Walmart and Amazon fat bike, the Mongoose Dolomite. I'm gonna tell you who this bike is for and who it is not for. And in future videos, I'm gonna show you how you can make this bike better and maximize the performance, even keeping an entry-level budget in mind. So if you wanna follow along with that process, definitely subscribe to the channel right now. As a long time and avid cyclist, and more specifically a fat biker, I wanna really do my best to promote fat biking to as many people as possible and that includes people at all skill levels and all budgets. Unfortunately, I do know it's popular for some people in the cycling industry to really look down on bikes like this, entry-level bikes bought at big box stores. But I do really think it's important to give these bikes some coverage and show what they can and can't do. And while I really do feel that these bikes do have their place and can be a valid bike for some people, I definitely also want to be transparent and explain the compromises and limitations that they do have. So let's get onto the bike and give some specific details on it. So this bike has been available at Walmart in the past. I haven't seen it recently. It still may be out there in various stores and parts of the country but it is actively on Amazon right now and I will drop a link down in the description below if you want to go see it. This specific bike was about $400 when it was bought brand new in early 2020. Currently the prices on Amazon are considerably higher which I think is directly the result of all these supply chain issues that are occurring in the bike industry right now as a lot of bikes aren't available at all. This actually was my dad's fat bike but he recently did get a bike upgrade so we no longer needed this bike which I'll go into a little more detail later. So as a result, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to spend some time with this bike as it comes, uh, reflectors, kickstand and all. Before we talk about the ride impressions, let's just give a quick overview on the basic uh, specs and features that this bike has. It is a steel frame bike. I'm not sure what the alloy is, but it's certainly a lower end uh, alloy based on the price point. And actually, I'm quite impressed with the looks of the bike. It actually is pretty, pretty sharp looking in my opinion. The welds are a little bit rough, but nothing to be concerned about. The drivetrain on the bike is a one by seven. Although it is very simple, it does have very limited range, which is one of the major shortcomings of the bike. The crank set appears to be a no name. There's no branding on it at all. However, the grip shifter and the derailleur are Shimano Turney. And speaking of the grip shifter, I've never really been a fan of those as they can be difficult to modulate, but I will talk about that in more detail in the ride section. Almost all the other parts on the rest of the bike are not brand specific. The brakes are unbranded, they are mechanical, and they do have 160 millimeter rotors front and rear. And again, I'll give a little more information on the performance in the ride section. The wheels are 26 inches in diameter. They appear to be steel and they do not have any cutouts as you can see. They also appear to be about 100 millimeters wide. The tires are unbranded and are four inches wide. They are more of a hybrid tread design, so they do actually roll halfway decent on pavement or hard packed dirt. Based on how they feel and the price point of the bike, I am almost positive they are wire bead tires, which definitely adds weight. And as a result, I'm also sure that they're a really low thread count because they don't feel very supple or compliant at all. So all these factors with the wheels and the tires really do add up to show why the bike is so heavy. So let's get on to my very first ride impressions of this bike, which happened recently while I was visiting family in Ohio, and then we'll come back and wrap up. Okay, so now that we have uh, taken a close look at the bike and talked about the spec of the parts, let's talk about the ride impression. So as far as how the bike actually feels, seat of the pants, so to speak, the bike itself doesn't feel so bad. Uh, this is the application for the bike, so paved or really smooth bike path riding. This is about the only thing I would use this bike on. It does do a serviceable job in these conditions. I wouldn't even attempt this bike on more aggressive trail riding of any kind. I think it would be questionable in the snow even, even with the large tires, just because of the weight of the bike. Speaking of the weight, I don't have my scale with me to actually get a, a comparable accurate weight with it. But in reading a number of the Amazon reviews on this bike, it looks like it's coming in at about 48 or 49 pounds. That was the most consistent figure I saw. Someone even weighed the wheel set. So the front wheel and tire was over 11 pounds and the rear was over 13 pounds. It's about 25 pounds worth of just wheels and tires, which is pretty insane. My entire Canyon cross country race bike weighs about 25 pounds. My Chile ice cream truck, which is about 35 pounds and by no means light, feels nimble by comparison to this bike. Since the brakes are introducing themselves, 
let's talk about them. They're very poor. When you put very low end brakes on a bike that is extremely heavy like this, it's a bad combination. So for leisurely bike path riding like this, you know, they do stop you. But as you can hear, they are uh, protesting every time you clamp them on. Let's talk about another poor choice for the bike. It's the drivetrain. It's very low end, one by seven. So very, very limited gear range, which is not good when you have an extremely heavy bike with very heavy wheel and tire combination. That means you're limited on the mechanical advantage that the gears can provide as far as moving the bike along, especially if you hit a climb. Other aspect about the drivetrain is the grip shifter. This is something you commonly see on low end bikes, especially kids bikes. I don't know why they do it. I think in theory, it sounds like it's a good idea to have one thing you move front to back instead of a couple levers to push. But in my experience, they never work really well, especially for someone with small hands that are new and unsteady on a bike, trying to actuate it is not always the best thing. And as you can hear, it's extremely loud on this bike, but the shifts do work. So it's clunky and loud, not very precise, but it gets in the gear it needs to get into. I suspect the one by drivetrain on this type of bike, one of the benefits is because the drivetrain is not very precise. You don't really have to worry about dropping a chain on the one by, so that's one advantage. There's actually chain guard on the front sprocket. So if I had to summarize the ride experience on this bike, I would say it this way. It's very occasional, fairly short, very gradual terrain such as this is your only intended use or expected use down the road. This bike can do it. And it might be all you ever need as long as you're willing to accept those compromises on poor brakes and shifting it can be a serviceable bike in those very narrow conditions okay back now for some follow-up on the ride i have ridden this bike a couple other times after getting it back to colorado i'd say overall my impressions are still pretty similar it's actually an okay bike for its target audience and use case but what is that so i would say that this bike is for people that do not ride often they're not avid cyclists they're more uh, casual use riders who uh, want to ride once or twice a month and do short distances it's also better suited for flatter non-technical terrain so if you are someone who's interested in getting into fat biking and you wanted to ride often uh, you're interested in riding higher mileage and wanted to get into increasingly varied terrain, I'd probably recommend you look for a higher quality bike than this one. My dad eventually did find out after getting a more traditional, higher quality hardtail mountain bike. Uh, he much preferred the lighter weight of that bike and the greater gear range than what this bike offered. And as a result, he didn't really have any interest in riding this bike anymore. That said, as I mentioned earlier, I am gonna try to make some improvements to this bike. Uh, while remaining budget conscious and we shall see how much better it can be made while keeping it in that entry-level space so i really did feel it was important to cover a truly entry-level fat bike and this one does have about 2500 reviews on amazon averaging about a 4.5 out of 5 star rating so people are buying these bikes and do seem to be fairly satisfied and as someone who has a lot of fat bike experience in technical terrain riding higher quality bikes i felt i could give a good perspective on what this bike offers and what limitations it may have so you could know that before you purchased one for yourself ideally if you can find the bike on the floor in a big box store where you can actually try it out that'd be best but if you are buying the bike online you may have have limited information as to what you're getting yourself into based on the type of riding you want to do. If you found this video helpful definitely drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, or if you happen to own one of these bikes and have any feedback to offer definitely drop a comment down below. And if you're interested in and enjoy fat bike content definitely subscribe down below as it does really help out the channel and it tells YouTube you want to continue to see this type of content. Thanks a lot and have a great day.